So are you new to Baldur's Gate 3 and you've got a battle with multiple enemies that you're finding just too hard to handle? Or you might have a boss that's one hitting one or more of your men? Well, I'm Lord Ugg as always and I'm going to teach you the power of Warden Bond. Let's go. Okay, before we take a look at Warding Bond in action, let's quickly look at the description of Warding Bond in Baldur's Gate 3. What all the writing basically says is, Warding Bond is a level 3 cleric only spell, and basically the cleric casts Warding Bond on the target, the target then gets plus 1 to armor class and saving throws, it also gets resistance to all 13 forms of damage that's in Baldur's Gate 3. It lasts until the party has a long rest, or either the caster or the target dies. Now let's quickly compare this to Warding Bond from Dungeons & Dragons 5e, which is what Baldur's Gate 3 follows. Because there's some significant changes. Basically, the 5e Warding Bond is exactly the same as Baldur's Gate, as Baldur's Gate 3's, with plus one to armor class and saving throws. Also, the spell breaks if the cleric or the target dies, but in 5e, the spell also breaks if the cleric and the target are separated by more than 60 feet and the duration of the spell is one hour. Now, these are very significant changes because the 60 feet rule and the one hour would make what I'm going to show you completely impossible. So it's strange that Larian made them changes knowing very well what could happen because they've been doing this a long time. So they knew this could happen, I'm guessing. But still, they have significant changes they made. So let's now move on to an example of Warden Bond in action. Okay, so in this first example, we're going to have Astarian attack the main character without Warden Bond. And we'll just see the kind of damage he does. A couple of hits, and already half my life's gone. Yes, we'll give you three hits, and we'll see what I've got left. I need healing. So I literally have six health left. So now we're going to quickly cast Warding Bond on the main character. If I go to the stat sheet, here you can see the 13 different forms of damage that I am protected from with Warding Bond. And you can see there's a, a, a square around Shadowheart and around the main character. So we're going to bring a Starion in again. And this time... We're going to do the same three hits. So, one. Well, when he hits. One. Now, remember, I had six left last time. Two. Three. And this time, as you see, I can compare both bars. And we've taken the same damage. But whereas I went down... To, I lost 25 last time. I've basically lost 11. So Warding Bond makes a big difference. Now, just in case you were wondering, yes, that also does count for fall damage. Because the falling isn't a problem, but the hitting the ground is. That's classed as bludgeoning damage, and that's part of the resistance. So to show that quickly, if you look here, I'm going to pick me. Still alive. I'm going to pick my progress. jump. And it tells me that if I do that jump I am going to take 25 hit points of damage so let's do the jump and as, as you see I only have 7 left so I took 24 close enough let's reset ok so before I jump we're going to of course to cast Warden Bond there's the squares around so now, well, I'm going to still not as bad as I'm going to bring him forward a little bit more. Click on jump. And as, and as you can see, it tells me I'm still going to take 25 hit points of damage. So let's jump off. But, as you've seen, instead, I took 11. Shadow Heart took the other 11. So, so it protects you against full damage too. Okay, now we've seen Warding Bomb protect us against a couple of different forms of damage. You can also see that there's a problem here. 
and that is that the cleric cannot cast warding bond on herself so she cannot get the resistance to all the damage that you do so she has to take all damage that she gets which means she's going to be taking one and a half amount of damage all of hers and half of yours that means she's going to die very quickly now thanks to the wording that larian changed in the Baldur's gate 3 warding bond there is no distance limit in Baldur's gate 3 so you can leave the cleric in camp and you can go to the other end of the map and she and the cleric will still get half of the damage and protect you and you will only get the other half so you have to keep going back and healing them from time to time so that they don't die and if that shadow heart then you might not want her to stay back in base because you might want her with you so the other way around that and i'm going to show you a couple alternatives here and one of them is just go Fate to withers spin does thou require a new very get, well get a hireling they only, they only cost 100 and if you grab this guy here this one here he is a cleric so we can just take him and we've got cleric now we switch to him level up and make sure he's got warding bond now at level four he gets a feat no matter which cantrip but he gets a feat now a feat you could give him is tough because that gives him two hit points for every level he is now he's level four at the moment so he's going to get eight more hit points which will give him a bit more survivability before you have to come back and of course there are items you could put on him armor things like that that will give him even more resistance so he will have quite a lot of survivability but they can still they will still die eventually so we finished, there we are, and now we have a cleric that has Warding Bond. And of course you could now cast Warding Bond on your squishiest character. So if you have a wizard or, an, or a, another cleric that you might want to protect, he can now cast Warding Bond on them. But there is another alternative. What if you want all your party to be protected? He can't Warding Bond everybody because he's taking four lots of half damage. He'll die quickly. So what you have to do is... You have to let me just kick and this guy out. So what? So what you'd have to do is Fate talk to Withers again, a new, get another well. hireling. Doesn't matter who you pick. Bring them into game, select them. Don't level them up. Just go back to Withers, change class, because only one of the prepared ones is a cleric. So you'll have to get whatever class you get. In this case, it's a rogue, and we'll just turn him into a cleric. And then just level them up as normal, as a cleric. Do this until you've got four clerics. And then each of your party members can have their own cleric to cast warding bond on them. So then all your party has it. So that's the alternatives. Now let me show you the optimum way of using warding bond. Right, now we've looked at a couple of alternatives. We're now going to look at the optimum way. So what's the optimum way? Well, let me introduce you to... Gale. Gale is a wizard. Yes, not a cleric. But, but Gale has a special ability. Now, before I show you that, there's something when I want to show you also. Because it's going to be significant. And that is, I want you to look here. He's got no spell slots left. They're all empty. Right, that's all we needed to know. Now, I need to take Gale out of How the party. And I'm I going to show you something. Decision, but so be it. I'll be right, and I'll show you something that Gale can do. That no one else you have can do. That is. Stop it! Watch his health. Oh. He casts a spell simply called Regain Hit Points. And it gives him all his health back. And on top of that. Now I need to join him back up again to show you this. With Not only that, but look at his spell touch. slots. So regain hit points not only heals all hit points, but it also gives him back all his spell slots. So you can see how that benefits, because with the other clerics, you have to keep going back to camp to heal them so they don't die. But Gale heals himself. But Gale's a wizard. So all we do is bring Gale to with us. Ah, I shall be here in we change class. And we change Gale into a cleric. 
No longer Gale the Wizard, now Gale the Cleric. And now you just level up as normal. Okay, so now my Gale is a Cleric, which means I can cast Warding Bond on him. On him. On her. And now Gale is taking damage for all your party. The problem is with using Gale and leaving him in camp is you're losing a powerful wizard. And you might miss that. You might really like having a powerful wizard. Well, all you do is come over to Withers, hire, use a hireling as a wizard, give him all the spells that Gale's got, and then give him Gale's armor, weapons, and everything. So it's basically just Gale, except not Gale, but just Gale. And then you've got your wizard back. So anyway, that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. Hope you've enjoyed this. Hope it's helped. I am only kind of pushing this towards new players because if you're a kind of a bit more of a seasoned player, you'll know how to build your party out. But even seasoned players can lose people if uh, they position themselves wrong. But still, hope this helps. If it does, consider leaving a like and uh, feel free to leave a comment. And uh, I will get back to you soon. If you wish to subscribe, that would be great too. But until then, you take really good care and goodbye for now.